Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Good How is your spirit today as you are going to hit the field? My spirit, and I believe the spirits of my comrades, is high. Um, we refuse to be beaten down. We refuse to yield to the negativities. So we are positive and we are keeping on going despite the hurdles that we keep uh, encountering. Yes. How was your experience yesterday in Ibundibujo after you resumed these political activities that you are carrying on? We know that uh, you were stopped, but still you were able to talk to the people there. What do you make of that whole situation now it was yesterday? Actually, yesterday we were not able to address the people of Bundibujo. We only uh, stopped at opening our office and spoke to a few people that were at our offices. Um, we encountered numerous roadblocks on the way to Bundibujo, but we managed to uh, go past them. However, at our very offices, before we entered Bundibujo, uh, when we opened our office, before we could even proceed to the radio station that we had paid and booked, uh, to speak to the people of Bundibujo and then later go to Boma Grounds, which we had also paid for and uh, secured our public address system was there. And the police and all authorities were informed and notified just like it was agreed uh, between our leadership and the police. But as usual, they acted out of the law, assisted uh, by the military, uh, blocked the road, and we could not go on with our activity in Bundibujo as planned. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, time and again, your leadership, you keep meeting the police or those in the government, and you agree on particular issues. And this is where the many people are concerned that what is it exactly that you agree on and who is abusing it? Because, for example, if you are loud and you say, you even tell the public that we are resuming our political activities, for example, for yesterday, we are going to be in Bundibujo at a particular ground where you even pay for. Then how comes that, this, that the police come again and they stop you from doing actually what I assume you agreed with them? Yeah, that was not the first time. You remember we were blocked from going to Kamoli, even when everything was set and everything was notified. Uh, I mean, police was notified and all other security agencies. Uh, the same thing happened when we were going to Bugwedi. Um, of course, we engaged the police again. We are trying as much as possible to be moral, to, be, to take legal lines, and to avoid any confrontation with them, no matter how much they try to push us. Mm. The same way we were going to Masaka. Um, they blocked, uh, before they blocked the road, you remember there was an accident, which was very many miles away from us, but the police decided to target on us. Of course, they couldn't find any way to, um, uh, you know, involve us in that, and that passed. Mm. So we went to Masaka, although they never allowed us to use the main road. But coming to Bundibujo, this was more than, I think, beyond the 10th time that they're doing this. You know, they have put all manner of conditions, all stringent conditions, and we've abided by them. It should be noted that in venues where other political leaders and other entertainment activities take places, they don't allow us to go there. We were meant to be in Masaka at the Independence Square where all other political leaders go and address people. We as NUP, we are blocked. The same thing in Boma Grounds yesterday in uh, uh, Bundibujo. They blocked us. Like they keep blocking. They even block us from using the public roads. So it is clear that the police is trying as much as possible to provoke us into violence. But we refuse that because we know non-violence is actually much stronger than violence. Mm. We are trying as much as possible to show the people that we are the moral guys and the police mm. are the bad guys. And that's unfortunate. That's a very big taint to the security agencies, to the national police, which is supposed to be uh, keeping law and order, protecting people and their property. But now police is reduced to playing politics. That's very unfortunate. But I insist that we shall maintain our decency, we shall maintain our non-violent nature, and the police will continue to expose itself until a time when people will not take this anymore. Mm. So I want to assume that one of the major issues that come out in your discussion with the security personnel, it is about the particular route that you should use when you are going for this uh, mobilization tours. They have always raised concern that you are supposed to use particular routes to these venues. When you discuss that, does that come out of this discussion and is it always clear to them that this is what the route, the route you'll use and you also agree with them or it is something that changes laterwards and you just discover that some changes have been made? We always agree about everything. 
and they put conditions they say go secure permission for this venue we do secure permission they say secure and pay for the radio stations we do notify all uh security leaders in the area we do notify them but they just change they just show up and say no you cannot use this road this is an order from above now this uh event cannot go on it's an order from above just like yesterday they all of a sudden they said no you cannot use uh the venue in bundibujo and they sent us 30 miles away from bundibujo they said that's where we're supposed to address a, uh, a rally from we didn't book that venue we don't even know there you know we went to bundibujo we secured the venue and paid for it in bundibujo so we cannot go anywhere when we're not even sure of our security and like we've said numerously if the police wants us to talk to the people 30 miles away from the venue we agree we have no problem we can go there later but we want to follow what is agreed upon and what is paid for mm. yeah i want to believe that still you managed to pass on your message to the people when you were there to, the, to you that does not make any difference for example i want to assume you are just a few meters away from the heart of Undibujo yes. town i want to think that that gave you even a benefit that you are able to address the people why would you still insist on going back to Bundibujo as you indicated to me yesterday but the people were in Bundibujo <laughs> they were all full in the in the venue where we're going boma grounds was full of people Bundibujo town was full of people waiting for us to head to boma grounds that is where we were meant to address people of course when we're opening our offices quite a number of people came to welcome us it is only those that were at our office that i addressed told them the truth that we were meant to address them on radio especially the young the sick and the elderly who could not uh come into the hustle of uh you know listening to us live wanted to talk to them on the radio station we were blocked from that like we've been blocked numerously from radio stations in up country, uh, up country areas so we just spoke to those ones we know that sometimes our messages go far and wide thanks to social media and the people especially young people that pick our messages and take it there but that was not the intention it is within our right as a political party as leaders to address the population but the regime deliberately blocks us from sending our message to the population which message they fear because it's a message that exposes their ills and it's a message that will liberate the people's minds and ultimately their bodies mm. i would like you to ask you for coming from the point where saying that your message still can be heard i would like to know whether you think you are making progress as a party in during this mobilization tours uh because like for example this uh, all week you have programs lined up yes uh, do you, and uh, if police keeps doing the same do you think you are hitting the target that you set as a party I mean, our target is to address the people, to go there peacefully, and to return home peacefully, to send a positive message. We don't want to be seen clashing with the police, but they are trying as much as possible to paint a violent image of us, which they should be ashamed of themselves. I cannot say our message goes because we are constantly blocked. Of course, it paints a very negative message, a, a very negative image of the police, and it shows that they are partisan. Other political players are allowed to go about their businesses. But NUP in particular is being hounded left, right, and center. So this clearly shows who the regime is afraid of. It shows who the real oppositions are. But most importantly, it shows that this is a... a a, a, a biased police and therefore has no moral authority to be the police of uganda okay in what i picked from your message yesterday you did address people of bundibujo saying that bundibujo should be far away from what it is today in terms of development but also you hinted at the issue of corruption whereby the inspectorate of government highlights that we lose about 10 trillion shillings annually yes. and uh, we have seen president Museveni coming up with some measures members of parliament are currently battling cases in the courts of law we have seen him come up with some agencies within state house <laughs> do you think he's taking up serious measure and is serious about the fight against corruption at this particular moment but Museveni is the high priest of corruption in uganda Museveni uh, institutionalized corruption Museveni legitimized corruption he uses it as a currency you know the same person that walked against corruption at the event while he was speaking on that very event blocked 
the IGG from carrying out a lifestyle audit because he claims the corrupt people will go and invest out of the country instead of uh, investing, in, uh, investing in Uganda. He's the same person that rewards corruption. He rewarded the Mike Mokolas uh, after theft, uh, the Jim Wazes after theft of resources that were meant to help the most vulnerable people. He has shielded Anita Mong, you know, the most corrupt speaker of parliament Uganda has ever known. He has shielded her. Museveni rewarded Karemera, a convicted tax fraudster. So, what moral authority does Museveni has to talk about corruption? Of course, he will lie and lie and lie again, but we understand. We attribute it to age, we attribute it to character, and we attribute it to greed for power. So, corruption is Museveni's way of life. Corruption is Museveni's bloodline. And to end corruption in Uganda, the first thing that must end is the Museveni regime. Mm. You have talked of uh, him protecting the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among. Yes. Maybe if you can clarify on that further, because so far there is no any case that has been brought legally against the Speaker of Parliament. What is there at the moment is just allegations which have not yet been proven. So how would you like him to intervene? And possibly by coming for uh, members of Parliament, These you can say he's leading the way. You never know where it will end. These are not allegations. These are facts. Okay? These are facts. There are records from Parliament. These are facts, not allegations. And Museveni should be ashamed that international players, international, the international community has seen it. It is so glaring that it is seen by the international community. And they've even sanctioned her uh, in the UK. They've sanctioned her in America. And also sanctioned her in Dubai. So, here... Museveni protects corruption, but he cannot blind the whole world. You're talking about the justice system. Are you talking about the Ugandan justice system? Are you really serious? Why don't you just go to the next question? <laughs> I think the Ugandan justice system has uh, always... Uh, maybe it is debated, but uh, some people can say it is the same system that other people have used to get some fairness. But uh, moving away from that issue... You hinted at, you called on the youth yesterday yeah. uh, to stand up to emulate what happened in Kenya. Yeah. And somebody would argue that why would the Ugandans particular at this moment come out? For example, if it was during the election time, it would be rightfully so. But uh, right now the situation seems to be calm and people are moving on. Yes, there could be challenges here and there. Why do, would you want the youth to come out at this particular but moment? calmness does not mean peace. It is calm, but do you know what's happening behind the scenes? This, while, the, while you say the situation is, is calm, we lose more than 10 trillion to corruption. While you think the situation is calm, the money that is meant to buy ambulances is being paid to individuals that are connected to, the, to General Museven. While you say the situation is calm, more children continue to die, more women continue to die, our infrastructure continues to rot. So you cannot say it's calm. While it's come, the young people are losing their future. That's why I'm calling upon them to emulate the young people in Kenya and not to leave their future to only politicians. And by politicians, I mean all politicians, those in the ruling uh, party and even the so-called opposition. The young people must not leave their future to politicians. They must hold them accountable. Politicians don't do the right thing because they are good-hearted. No, it's because they are pressured. President Ruto of Kenya had to fire his entire cabinet. He had to drop the, 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 the oppressive uh, law that was uh, brought in Kenya that was going to financially strangle the people of Kenya, especially the young people. So this is why we're calling upon young people of Uganda to emulate those in Kenya and take their destiny in their own hands and not rely on politicians. And they you know, should not target to elections. Because in any case, we have not had elections. We just continue to have, you know, uh, what can I call it? Fr not just fraudulent elections, but, you know, mm. but, in uh, Uganda, they call it Kutu Samukolo. Mm. But uh, sometimes protests in Africa have taken the path of violence uh, and riots. And if you call on that, people will say, we have always tagged the national unity platform. To this kind of things yes. so if you come out isn't won't you be seen still by a section of the public that uh, this group is actually what we thought but about we them and not reinventing the wheel i'm telling them to emulate kenya is there war in kenya 
is there war in kenya no there's no war in kenya did the young people of kenya rise up non-violently and unarmed peaceful and asserted themselves yes they did did they get results yes they did so the young people of uganda emulate the young people of kenya the young people of kenya did not just do it for themselves they did it for all of africa indeed all of the world you see so that you see violence has always been used as an excuse when you say the truth they say you're inciting violence you know and now the young people of kenya made it clear that they're non-violent i've even seen some young ugandans calling for protests i support them and i like the fact that they're not tagging it to any political party or any religion or any tribe that is what it should be the only way general museven and his regime has always been suppressing ugandans from rising up and demanding for what rightfully belongs to them is by arresting one leader they arrest dr bcj or they arrest me and the people are made to think that now everything should go down but now the young people should take it beyond the leaders it should be beyond bobby wine most times they've been saying ah those are bobby wine things now the young people know that these are not bobby wine matters mm. these are not nup matters these are matters of their future in fact they need to protest more than me they are more pressured than myself they are young they have a longer future than myself so they should get involved okay. they should rise up peaceful unarmed the world is watching you saw the police spokesperson yesterday he couldn't you know reject the the the, the peaceful protests why because they are anchored in the law and they know the world is watching they cannot kill all people mm, but they have said that they have not yet cleared that kind of uh, arrangement so possibly they, they don't need i must remind the young people that they don't need police clearance they don't need permission from the police according to the law they just need to notify the police and i saw some document uh, going around online showing that they notified the police so we encourage them wherever you are in whatever part of the country you are and i request you don't tag this to any political party don't wear any political party paraphernalia don't carry any political party identity just carry your placards just write your message and go about your business go about your picketing your picketing your your, your demonstration your your your, your protests non-violently mm. and that will be the most powerful thing that you've ever experienced mm. in many can say that the way the youth in kenya used the social media was a, in a positive way yeah. that has resulted into some changes yeah. but if you and uganda there are a section of people who are trying to emulate the same yes. however where is the limit in the usage of social media because uh we have just seen recently uh, someone a young man was uh, sued prosecuted and sentenced to serve six years mm. in jail yes and so to you as a leader and normally they have always said that you know nup has left its youth and supporters to abuse members of the public so to you where where is the line drawn in terms of how social media should be used for positive change in society first of all i want to assert that the young man that was uh, sentenced to six years that's the most stupid judgment that one can think of it exposes our justice system we have an rdc of gomba where i come from the one who called Kisa, whatever this is a person that removed his pants and showed his buttocks to the king of buganda and to the public because he was angry with them for whatever reason and he was re rewarded with the post of rdc but this young man from wherever he is because he was uh speaking against general seveni he's in prison you've seen so many people so many people i'm not going to mention their names but you've seen them the person that uses the worst obscenities against me or against those that are speaking against the regime they get rewarded they get positions they become presidential advisors so the more obscenities that you spew out there the more chances of becoming uh either an rdc or or a presidential advisor or whatever so imagine but, but, but they say that two wrongs do not make a right so if the other group 
that's how they are being awarded for we you do you think you should encouraging die? wrong but i'm trying to show you the hypocrisy of this regime i'm trying to show you that one person does something and is rewarded with the position of rdc or presidential advisor and another person does the exact same thing and they are sentenced to six years in prison of course you know what that puts what kind of image it paints for our country to our country internationally but again coming back to how to use social media we have always been clear to the young people of uganda encouraging them to use social media positively but also encouraging them to be non-violent so for somebody to non-violently provoke you with words i think that's much better than violence when Museveni and his friends were our age, they did not abuse anybody. They just picked guns and killed people. Mm. They went around raping women. They went around raiding hospitals and all that. That's exactly what they do. Mm. Do you want to compare that to social media, you know, insults? No. Of course, we don't encourage insults. Mm. We encourage decency. But we also ex uh, encourage our people to express their anger non-violently and to make sure that they communicate in a way that will earn them respect mm. the regime i must end by saying that the regime wants to tag every negativity to nup but people know that we preach positivity we preach decency and we preach positive and decent change mm. and uh, maybe as i finalize one of the question i have is about your relationship currently with the mango establishment because we keep do you think what has happened between you with the former leader of opposition has somehow strained your relationship with the mango establishment because we keep messages that keep coming from there shows that possibly this could even divide the, coming from where uh, from mango generally mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have had the 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 the, the katikiro mm -hmm. coming out also speaking about by the way issues to do with the uh, the, the, the the being abused people from nup not respecting the others and so on not so him say that mm, yeah but, but what is your relationship kind kind like is, currently? let me ask you is the former leader of opposition the kabak of uganda is the former leader of opposition the katikiro of uganda NUP is a political party and it's run at a national level. Mm. It's not a Buganda party. It is a Uganda party. We are responsible for Ankole, for Busoga, for Acholi, for Kasese, from, for all of Uganda. I come from Buganda. I'm a Muganda also. And in Buganda, we are all equal. Okay, so you cannot tell me that tomorrow if honorable if right honorable joel senyonyi is no longer leader of opposition and we have odong or we have uh mogisha or we have uh you know anybody from any other region are you going to tell me that the mango establishment is going to be angry that we changed him no it is wrong to try to reduce our kingdom to politics of course, many people have been trying to hide behind the church and behind the Mengo establishment. And I'm, I'm a Muganda and I'm a Catholic. And in our Baganda culture, we don't condone corruption. In the Catholic uh, church, we don't condone corruption. So please don't try to hide corruption in our kingdom. It's a decent kingdom. Don't try to associate our kingdom or our church with corruption scandals. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking to us yeah, this finally, morning. If mm. you will allow me, I will once again drum this message to the young people of Uganda. This is your country. This is where you are born. This is where you're living. And when you die, this is where you're going to be buried. But most importantly, this is where your children and grandchildren are going to be. It is in your absolute personal interest to rise up and defend your future don't leave it to us don't leave it to the leaders we do our part we guide you we lead you we we make sure we carry the flag we make sure we carry the message everywhere but ultimately it's going to be you you are the only justification to show the world that this is not a chagulani matter this is not a nup matter in fact this is not an issue of opposition so many people in the nrm hate corruption so many people in the nrm want change so you the young people of uganda come together tribeless partyless religionless 
join hands and save your country don't reduce it to chagulanyi or to anybody else this is your country we can lead but we can't do anything without your involvement so get involved get your country back if you wonder how it's done look at the neighbors in kenya they did it you can do it you can rise up peaceful unarmed non-violent and claim back your country don't wait for me in fact don't expect me there let every one of us play his part young people of uganda member this is your turning point rise up and save your future before it's too late so about your program for today where are you heading to and what is your expectation today we are heading to ishaka and Bushenyi. we hope the police will not break the law again our only weapon is the camera to show the world what is happening we are peaceful we are law-abiding citizens we are non-violent we are coming to the people of Bushenyi and ishaka to deliver the message of change we are looking forward to seeing you our people later on we are going to ishaka okay thank you very much